So today what we're going to talk about is I'm a home inspector and one of the most common questions I get asked is would you buy this house? And that's a question I really not could not answer because each house, each person is different for each situation. So a house that may be not good for me might be perfect for somebody else and a house that is perfect for me somebody else might be saying are you crazy i'm not buying that house so i'm going to give my opinion today on the type of houses i would not buy i'm not saying there's anything wrong with these kind of houses but in my opinion i would not buy them especially here in florida so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over the top 10 things i would would cause me to walk away from my house so stay till the end because I'm gonna tell you the biggest one that I would walk away and I think you should walk away from also in the meantime do me a favor if you like these kind of videos consider subscribing it really helps out the channel and it's greatly appreciated so let's get started the first thing that will cause me to say hey I don't want to buy this home is foundation issues cracking in the foundation settlement in the foundation i'm not talking about like hairline cracks i'm talking about cracks and obvious settlement even though it could be fixed i just don't think it's something i want to approach because a lot of time when they're starting to fix foundation issues it uncovers bigger problems so when i'm purchasing a home on a foundation issue I may walk away from it the other thing I wouldn't buy in my opinion and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it but I don't like homes on crawl spaces because crawl spaces especially the older homes you know when they're like on blocks supporting them that stuff could shift and you know it's hard to go underneath there and sometimes water gets underneath there and and there's no vapor barrier and dampness I just feel that I'm not a big fan of crawl spaces. So basements, I'm really good with, because um, a basement is great, but we don't have basements in Florida, really. That Maybe there's a couple, but I never ran into one. But when I lived up north, I loved my basement, and I could tell, I could see the, I could see the foundation, I could see if there's any cracking in the walls. So basements, I'm really cool with. Crawl spaces, not so much. And, you know, settlement, around the house foundation cracks i'm not a big fan of even though i'm not talking about again minor minor cracks i'm talking about more major that are obvious especially on the corners of the houses so th that would be one of the things that would cause me to say hey you know what this house is not for me here's another one electrical issues in a house and i'm not talking about an outdated panel i'm not talking about like a old panel like federal pacific zinsco you know that they're not really around anymore but they're still in plenty of homes or if it's rusted or anything like that i'm okay with that because i know a panel could be replaced and even though the panel might cost two thousand dollars to replace it i know i'll have an updated panel and i'll be happy about that what i'm talking about is wiring of the home i'm talking about like say it has cloth wiring it's an older home and has cloth wiring i'm not a big fan of cloth wiring even though they fixed it at the panel i know it's still in the walls i know it's still in the attic and stuff so i'm just not a fan of that is there a problem with it no not necessarily but you know there are people known to have some issues with it and there's still plenty of cloth wiring around the other thing I'm not a fan with is aluminum wiring. And I'm, and then I'm not talking about the multi-strand aluminum wiring that would be for a stove or something like that. I'm talking about just solid aluminum wiring that's run through the house. And yes, you could put pigtails on them and, you know, change them at the outlets and everything. But I'm not a fan of that either. I'm not saying anything's wrong with it but i'm not a fan of it so i would want the whole house rewired with proper wiring um, and that could be expensive especially going through walls and everything and some of the older homes 
you you go in there you see the outlets and they're two prong outlets and they're not grounded correctly so you would have to reground all the outlets run wires and it's just something that I would move on from that house and pick a house that you know it's wired correctly and I wouldn't have to deal with it because it's a bigger job than you think running the wiring and it's more expensive too especially if it's maybe if it's a block home or depending on how it's built it could be extremely difficult so wiring is a big issue not so much the panel but just the wiring of the house what kind of wiring it uses how old is it how dated is it so things like that so that's my number two i would probably walk away from but everybody's different so that's my opinion on that one so let's go to number three all right here's one that i probably would walk away from a mold house i'm not saying it can't be mitigated and i'm not saying it can't be fixed but i'm not a big fan of mold okay especially with people with health issues and everything and i found that once i find mold in, in a house there's mold in it. it could be mold in the attic it could be mold behind paneling it mold could hide anywhere and it could develop and i understand now i'm not talking about small areas like you open up the you know the cabinet underneath the kitchen sink and you see some mold on the back wall and stuff yeah you could treat that and take care of it I'm talking about like you open up a closet, the roof has been leaking for a long time, there's mold up there, there's mold going across the ceilings. I just wouldn't want to deal with it. And I especially would not be able to deal with going into a house and as soon as I go inside, if it smells moldy and, you know, just wet and everything. And I wouldn't buy a house if I had a basement and I went into the basement. Every time I go into the basement, I see dampness on the floors or dampness on the walls or it smells wet, moldy. I just wouldn't do it because, yes, you could put a dehumidifier in there and it's normal for a lot of basements. But again, people kept asking, you know, would I buy this house or not? So I'm giving you guys examples of houses I would not buy. So no if the house if i walk into a house and it smells moldy i would not i would not buy it i just wouldn't want to deal with it i don't like mold and that's the end of that one another reason i would not buy a house is if i go into a neighborhood and i see every other house for sale in the neighborhood there must be a reason so i would definitely definitely want to find out why is there so many houses for sale in this neighborhood maybe it was a flooding issue maybe who knows what it was you know maybe the in florida maybe there was multiple sinkholes all over the place and you know people are getting scared so they want to sell their house before a sinkhole hits their house but i would you know make sure it would make me think twice about buying a house if there's multiple houses for sale and another thing about a neighborhood uh, other than the obvious you know um, that you guys could think of when it comes to a neighborhood is when I'm leaving a neighborhood there's so many neighborhoods that I've I've go to and I do inspections and the homes are beautiful and and they really are they're, they're beautiful homes everything is good but getting out of the neighborhood or going in a neighborhood it's like risking your life like I went to another neighborhood about a week ago and I was trying to get out of that neighborhood and there was so much traffic and everybody's flying at 60 70 miles an hour no lights and I'm like how am I gonna get out of this neighborhood so basically I would have to make a right hand turn and then make a quick u-turn to go in the opposite direction so for me exiting the neighborhood is a big issue I want an easy exit and easy entrance. I don't want to be able to risk my life to just get out of the neighborhood because of traffic. And the other thing too is, you know, some neighborhoods, the roads are a little bit on the narrow side and people park on both sides. And when kids are playing in the neighborhood, you know, they're shooting out between cars and everything. It just makes me uncomfortable because it could be a dangerous situation when it comes to kids. 
So things like that would cause me to second guess if I want to buy in that neighborhood, even though it's the perfect house. So let's go on to number five. So let's go on to, I think we're in number four. Another reason I would not buy a house is if I go into a neighborhood and I see every other house for sale in the neighborhood, there must be a reason. So I would definitely, definitely want to find out why is there so many houses for sale in this neighborhood? Maybe it was a flooding issue. Maybe who knows what it was, you know, maybe the, in Florida, maybe there was multiple sinkholes all over the place and, you know, people are getting scared. So they want to sell their house before a sinkhole hits their house. But I would, you know, make sure it would make me think twice about buying a house if there's multiple houses for sale. And another thing about a neighborhood, uh, other than the obvious, you know, um, that you guys could think of when it comes to a neighborhood, is when I'm leaving a neighborhood, there's so many neighborhoods that I I go to and I do inspections and the homes are beautiful. And and they really are, they're, they're beautiful homes, everything is good, but getting out of the neighborhood or going in the neighborhood, it's like risking your life. Like I went into another neighborhood about a week ago and I was trying to get out of that neighborhood and there was so much traffic and everybody's flying at 60, 70 miles an hour no lights and i'm like how am i going to get out of this neighborhood so basically i would have to make a right hand turn and then make a quick u-turn to go in the opposite direction so for me exiting the neighborhood is a big issue i want an easy exit and easy entrance i don't want to be able to risking my life to just get out of the neighborhood because of traffic and the other thing too is you know, some neighborhoods, the roads are a little bit on the narrow side and people park on both sides. And when kids are playing in the neighborhood, you know, they're shooting out between cars and everything. It just makes me uncomfortable because it could be a dangerous situation when it comes to kids. So things like that would cause me to second guess if I want to buy in that neighborhood, even though it's the perfect house. So let's go on to number five. Okay, number five, roof problems. And I'm not talking about, okay, I'm going there and it's a 20 year old shingle roof and it needs new shingles. That doesn't scare me at all. I would just negotiate the roof into the price of the home and make sure I change the roof out right away so the insurance gets lower because a lot of insurance companies don't like old roofs. What I, kind of roof problems I'm talking about that I might walk away from is if you're looking at your, the roof of the home and it looks like a wave going like this, you know, so the rafters, the sheathing, all that stuff, the trusses, you know, all that stuff is like warping. Maybe from, you know, if you're up north, you know, snow loads or maybe dampness and who knows what the problem would cause. Maybe it's cut, cut trusses in the attic. You never know what it is. But it's one thing changing the roof, the shingles, even some plywood underneath the shingles. That's, that's fine. But it's another thing if you have to rebuild the whole roof and the support system of the roof. So if I go up to, if I go up to a house and I'm looking up and I see the roof looks like a wave and not, not straight, I may not even go in the house. It, because I already know what I'm going to find and it's something I just don't want to deal with because that could become a big issue and not only that but something caused that issue too so that's another issue on top of just repairing the roof so roof major roof problems could be an issue and and the other thing I'm not a really big fan of just to throw it out there on roofs is flat roofs um, not, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them, but if they're not covered correctly, you have what's called pooling and pooling is when it rains and it's like a little swimming pool up there and you see big, big puddles. And the only way the, that water disappears is through evaporation or, you know, over time it just dries out because what happens is that area 
ages a lot faster and that's the area that's going to start leaking so me i like to buy a house with some kind of pitch on the roof so when it rains you know it drains off if i'm up north if it snows you know the when the ice melts and the snow melts it, it'll drain off so i'm not a big fan of flat roofs but a lot of people have them and they love them and and they're not having any issues but for me it's it's something I would not buy you know in a house here's another one plumbing issues certain plumbing issues I would walk away from the house and I'm not talking about a plumbing issue like a leaky kitchen sink or a bad water heater or um, the shower when I turn on the shower and it's dripping or a faucet outside I'm not talking about any of that I'm talking about things like polybutane plumbing it was it's like a great piping with gold looks like gold wedding bands on the end of it okay and it was really common from like 1978 to 1995 a lot of homes have you know used them especially here in Florida but what they found was they started leaking and a lot of times they would start just leaking for no reason because of the deterioration inside the walls and it would cause big big issues so you would have to repair it and a lot of times when you have an inspection done on a house people looking underneath the kitchen sink and they're like oh there's no polybutylene plumbing or in the bathroom no polybutylene plumbing okay everything seems good but they might have changed it there but they might have not changed it inside the wall so i would definitely do a deep dive to see if there's polybutylene plumbing in the house as a home inspector it's almost impossible for us to find it unless we we see it it's not like we could break open a wall and see what kind of plumbing it is but if i found out that a house has polybutylene plumbing i'm going to walk away because i don't want to replumb a whole house because that's really really expensive and it's something i just wouldn't want to deal with and breaking down walls or running lines or you know removing the old polybutylene plumbing and I just feel every time you get into that stuff, you open up a bigger can of worms. The other thing too is like on older homes, you know, the sewer lines, I would buy, I would definitely do a sewer scope on any older home without a doubt, you know, see if it's cast iron, see if it's clay, see if it's collapsed, see if, you know, there's a big oak tree with the roots that broke into, you know, the sewer lines. I would definitely do that. I would look for corrosion pipes and everything. Plumbing could be a really, really big issue. And it's something before I buy a house, I would do a deep, deep dive into it and see what kind of plumbing is throughout the whole house. Because I don't want to deal with cast iron. I don't want to deal with clay sewer lines. I don't want to deal with polybutyl thing. It's just not worth it to me. It may be worth it to you, but it's not worth it to me. So I would walk away from my house, especially if it had polybutylene plumbing. Everything else I could pretty much deal with, but I, once I have to go into the walls and start, you know, breaking walls and, and running new lines, I'm out. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, here's one that I'll probably get a lot of feedback on, okay? In Florida, I would not buy a wood built home all right there's a lot of homes in Florida that the first floor is blocked the second floor is wood and I'm okay with that and one of the reasons why I wouldn't buy a wood frame home is termites if I went into a house and I found out that it was tented because they had a termite infestation which is normal you know and it happens and it works it kills termites I don't know nobody could really find all the damage the termites created and I'm just not into termite homes I've looked at some homes and they were so badly eaten away underneath especially on the crawl space I'm just I looked underneath and it's just like eating away pretty much you have to rebuild the whole flooring and you got to rebuild the walls and you don't know where termites are yes you could tent the house and you kill the termites it doesn't mean it's going to rebuild the house so 
you saw the damage there. How long have the termites been there? They might have been there two, three years eating away. And it's just something I wouldn't want to deal with. Some people are okay with it. Okay, there's a little bit of termites. Let's lo locally treat it. But termites were there. So just because you found one spot and you could treat it doesn't mean there's not another spot that you haven't found that there's a lot of termites. I'm not really into a termite house. A lot of people are. They're like, hey, it's no big deal. You know, it's, it's around the, the wood, you know, around the windows and stuff. We'll just replace the wood and everything. That's fine. The other thing is, you know, I'm not crazy about, you know, wood structures is, you know, if it gets wet, damp, flooding, all that stuff. It's just not for me. I like the first floor to be block. Now, termite issues are big in Florida, but they might not be big in the Northeast or in the North in the colder climates. See, so it all depends on where you are. Every house I owned up North was wood structure. I didn't have any houses that were blocked. They were all wood and I was okay with it then. But here in Florida, you know, I would want to block home, you know, especially with hurricanes and storms and everything. I just feel that block is a lot more stronger than wood and there's a lot more benefits of it. So I would walk away from a termite home and, and I would walk away probably from a wood structure home you know unless it's something that I'm like all right this is really you know or like if it's on a stilt house like I'm building a stilt house so it's 18 feet up in the air but they're not going to put block on the stilt it's wood but I'm off the ground you see what I'm saying so wood structure I would probably walk away from Okay, here is one. It's not such a big deal in Florida because we don't have basements, but it was a big deal up in New Hampshire when I was there in other states, and that is radon gas. Okay, so even though it's not a big issue in Florida, it's a big issue in other places. Okay, the issue is basically what is radon gas, okay, and why would I walk away from a home that has radon gas? So let's just read the definition of what radon gas is and then let's talk about it. Okay, so radon gas is a radioactive, colorless, orderless, and tasteless gas that produced naturally when uranium, radium, and thorium decay in rock soil and groundwater. It's present everywhere on Earth, but radon levels are usually low outdoors and indoors. The risk of health is small, however, radon can seep into buildings through openings in floors, walls that are in contact with the ground, and can accumulate over time to pose a serious health hazard when people breathe radon. Radioactive particles are deposited on cells lining airways where they can damage DNA, potentially cause lung cancer. Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer after smoking. I wanted to read it so you guys could see it. It's not from me, it's from when I did a search about it. So, can you mitigate radon? Yeah, you could, okay? They, they have, I know a few houses up in the Northeast that had high levels of radon, and you know they could drill into the foundation, let the gases out, put a, a fan system in, and blow the radon gases out. But it's something that I just wouldn't want to deal with at all. That stuff that I can't see, can't smell, it's something I don't want to deal with. I want to be able to smell it, look at it, find it, and you know, if I was buying a house in certain areas, I would definitely have a radon test done. Absolutely, without a doubt. Before I bought it, I would do a radon test because it's everywhere. But if it came back and the radon has high levels, I would probably walk away from the house. So radon is one of those things that I'm like, hey, you know what? This house is not for me. Now let's go on to the biggest issue that I have that I would walk away from a house. This is the biggest issue I have. I would not buy a house that's in a flood prone area, especially if it was flooded before. Because once a house is flooded, okay, and you 
paid or the people paid and they repaired the, the house and everything, chances are it's going to flood again. Not if it floods again, when it floods again. So my thing is, and I love being on the water, don't get me wrong, but I would buy a house in a flood prone area if it's built up. I'm talking about like on stilts. I would find out what was the highest water level ever recorded in that area. Then I would make sure the house I'm looking at is, you know, a couple of feet above that. So like in Hudson, building that house in Hudson on the water, and that place floods all the time. There was a flood just a year ago and got four or five inches of water in people's houses. It doesn't sound like a lot, four or five inches, but it was devastating. It, you know, because once you have water in the house, then you have to cut the sheetrock, you have mold, you have a bunch of issues. And it's very, very stressful. You have to move out of the house while they fix it. Plus you have to pay really, really high flood insurance stuff. But if you, want, if you want to live on the water or you want to live in a flood prone area, if it's built up or it's on stilts, to me, that's okay. I would buy it all day long. Like the house that I'm doing, it's going to be like 17 to 18 feet above the ground. So I know that if water reaches that level and gets into the house at 18 feet, I'm not worried about it because the rest of Florida will be gone pretty much. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and yes, I will make sure the cars or whatever's underneath the house, you know, is out of the way so it won't get damaged from flood. But flood, I would not buy a house in a flood. If you know that that house flooded or you know, maybe they don't know, or we don't know if the house flooded. But if you do history and you could see that you're in a floodplain and there was flooding there, chances are that house might have had flooding. So I would definitely, definitely walk away from a house that had flooding or a flood issue. I would not buy a house. It could be the perfect house. It could be, you know, you might be like, all right, I'm not going to pay the six to $10,000 it is for flood insurance. You know, I'm going to self-insure because I don't have a mortgage. That's fine. But you think it's going to be cheap? It's not going to be cheap, especially if you flood and then flood. I saw houses that got flooded and from the flood caused fire and from a fire, the house burnt down. Okay. It happened to like two or three houses, a few houses, just, you know, two, three years ago, right where I'm building three houses burnt down because of flooding. It started with a flood and ended up with a fire. Not worth it to me. And I don't think anybody should buy you know, a house that's been flooded before because it's going to get flooded again. Maybe for you, it would be okay. Comment below. Tell me what you guys think about that. But I don't have a problem buying the flood zone, but make sure it's higher than the highest flood that there was. That's the biggest thing I would walk away from a house. It could be the most beautiful, perfect house. But if it flooded in the, ba in the past, I am not buying it. And I'm going to make sure that whatever house I buy, is above way above the floodplain that's today's video do me a favor comment below tell me what you guys think i probably missed a few things that you guys could think of i'd like to hear about it give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe it's greatly appreciated and we'll talk to you in the next one thank you and have a great day